Hello and welcome to this month's episode of Henfield Happenings. I'm Morgan Minnick. And I'm Larissa Schaefer. This month we explored how neighborhoods are coming together to help those in need, and fun activities you can do at home. Keep watching for all of this and more on this month's episode of Hempfield Happenings. Due to the coronavirus, Pennsylvania is currently experiencing a statewide stay-at-home order. During this time, Hemfield School District has transferred all classes online until the end of the school year. Us students of Hemfield Happenings have decided to make the best of this situation by creating a show within the confines of our own home. According to the World Health Organization, everyone is encouraged to stay at home as much as possible, keep a safe distance, and to wash hands often. Throughout this month's episode, we have all practiced these safety measures and encouraged all others to do so as well. It is important to stay connected throughout this stressful time. Megan Seaman explored how Mountville teachers were staying connected. Due to the recent outbreak of COVID-19, schools all across the nation are being forced to shut their doors. However, some districts are finding a creative way to show school spirit. Recently, Mountville Elementary School organized a teacher drive. During this event, teachers drove through the neighborhoods of students, decorated with Hemfield pride and honking their horns. Missy Pop, who is a first grade teacher at Mountville, was the leader of this endeavor. Well, let me start back with how I... what prompted me to do it as I was walking in the neighborhood and I saw a bunch of kids and they were all like hi Mrs. Pop and I was like missing them so much and then I saw on Facebook and social media how other schools were doing these drive-by parades so I really quick texted and sent a text to a bunch of my co-workers and I'm like is anybody interested in doing a teacher parade and it snowballed from there. Countless students and parents came outside their homes to support the parade. Many of them even made signs or wore Hemfield gear to show their appreciation. The impact of the event was clear as students shared their thoughts on the matter. And it was really nice to see my teacher because I haven't seen her in two weeks. And it was nice to see my first grade teacher because I really miss all my teachers and my special teachers. The drive-thru was amazing and then I, I got to see all of my teachers and some of my friends' teachers. It made me feel happy because um, they took their time out of their day and to make us happy and I missed my teachers. However, the event was not only for the students. Its effects impacted the teachers as well. Well, I'll have to say, like, driving through the community, I went from happiness to crying to laughing to a lot of different emotions. Um, I think a lot of us teachers are, uh, we appreciate that one-on-one -on -one interaction with our students, so I think we're struggling just as much as the kids are struggling with not seeing us. With the possibility of indefinite school closure, Mrs. Pop shared her thoughts about doing future events. Well, I don't know, you know, at this point in time, we're just playing it day by day, but I would love to do something more, especially if we're going to be on online learning for a while. I've had nothing but positive feedback from it, from everybody. I like seeing the kids and driving through the community, so I don't know, who knows? Maybe we'll have to wait and see. Despite the challenges COVID-19 has brought, the community continues to find ways to be resilient. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Megan Seaman. We love Mountville. With the extra free time that we have been given due to COVID-19, it is vital to keep our minds busy. 
A good way to stay busy is to start new projects. This month, Meredith Hunter interviewed a local art teacher about a unique way students have been showing their creativity. It's important to get outside, as long as you abide by social distancing regulations. One local mom put a creative twist on getting outside, and Landisville Primary Center's art teacher, Mrs. Beidler, helped spread the idea throughout the community. So the first week that we were home, I got this email from one of the moms in the Parkview neighborhood and said, hey, we're having this art show. Would you like to come? Well, of course I want to come. Mm -hmm. And what they encouraged kids to do was to take whatever art they made and put it on tables at the end of their driveways. And then from like three to seven, one afternoon, everybody could walk around keeping safe distance and see all the kids' artwork. And so I showed up and this was the very first week when we weren't quite used to the whole social distancing thing. Yeah. So I wore this kind of sandwich board that says, I miss you, but please, oh, please don't hug me. Because <laughs> I was afraid kids were going to come up and hug me because that's what we do. And I didn't want yeah. them to think that I was being cold or standoffish. Mm -hmm. And I also made these ribbons for all the kids that said, stand back, but stand tall. We are creatively strong. There are a lot of reasons why art is a great outlet during tough times. The first reason that I can think of is creativity is not like toilet paper. It's not a commodity that you're gonna run out of. Uh, in fact, it's almost the opposite. Like the more you allow yourself to think creatively and kind of lean into those creative thoughts that you might not logically or systematically think of as solutions, the more creative thoughts you allow to take control, the more creative thoughts you generate. And the whole basis of being a visual artist is we start seeing things in a different way. And isn't that a skill that we've all had to learn these days is trying to see things in a different way and appreciating different things that we might have taken for granted. Art is a great way to express yourself and pass the time while stuck at home. And these works of art even help to bring the community together during these tough times. If any of my kids are watching this, just know that I miss you, like all the teachers at LPC miss you, and we can't wait to get back in the classroom again. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Meredith Hunter. When leaving your home for necessary tasks, like going to the grocery store, make sure you are being safe. Wearing a mask is highly recommended. Keep a safe distance of six feet from others and wash your hands and wipe down possibly dirty surfaces frequently. COVID-19 has impacted our community in many ways. Gunner, Maine explores which type of businesses are allowed to remain open. Right now, it's eight o'clock in the evening and usually at this time, this intersection is much more busy than it is now. COVID-19 has had such a massive impact on our community to the point where only certain businesses are allowed to be open. On March 19th, 2020, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf ordered all non-life-sustaining or non-essential businesses to close statewide. And so I will be working with local officials, permitting authorities, and others to enforce mandatory closures. We will be using every tool possible to ensure that we are mitigating the spread of COVID-19. But what exactly are these life-sustaining or essential businesses that are allowed to be open? The shortened list includes grocery stores, gas stations, auto parts stores, banks, healthcare, laundromats, social assistance services, and restaurants can still offer takeout, delivery, and drive through services. The full, extensive list posted on the PA government website goes into specifics on what is open or not. And on April 15, 2020, the PA Department of Health announced an order regarding public health safety measures for essential businesses. Some big things they mentioned were all employees must wear masks while at work, they must wash their hands every hour, and at grocery stores, carts and baskets have to be wiped down before each use. This order went into effect April 19th at 8 p.m. It's a good thing precautions like those were put in place. Stay safe out there. And for Hempfield Happenings, I'm Gunnar Maine. Make sure you're not snacking too much on junk food and are maintaining a healthy diet. However, during these times, not everyone has access to food. A first grader started a food drive with her family to support her community because of the coronavirus and got her whole neighborhood involved. Here's the other. Thank you. 
According to the New York Times, food banks are overrun due to the demand for food assistance and the shortage of donated food and volunteers because of COVID-19. First grader Harper, along with her third grade sister Blake and four-year-old brother Ethan, decided that they wanted to help and organized a neighborhood food drive. So we have been not skirting around the issue of the coronavirus and just kind of sharing the reality of what's going on at an age-appropriate level. And Harper, one night when we were talking about this going to bed, Harper said, well, what if people need help while, while this is going around? I said, well, a lot of people do, honey. So then we talked about how a lot of the businesses have closed down and what happens when you're not working, then you don't have as much, as much money. And I said, you know, some people are even probably struggling to buy the food they need. And she said, well, then let's give them some food, mom. And I was like, okay. So I explained to her what a food bank was. And she said, let's collect food and give it to a food bank. And so at that point, I thought, you know what? Why don't we just have fun and try to incorporate the neighborhood and it'd be a fun activity for them. And just to see how, you know, if everyone does a little bit, it can add up to a really big thing. And so we printed those papers out and they're just so proud scooting around to the whole neighborhood. And hopefully it can spark some ideas for other families um, just to do a little bit. Cause you know, it doesn't need to be a big action, but if we all do small steps, it makes a big difference. Right. We printed out some paper and then we put it in pe um, people's mailboxes um, around the, um, the neighborhood. Each slip had a list of non-perishable food items and asked neighbors to put the food in bags and leave those bags in front of their house to be picked up by the children. And they spent hours collecting donated goods from many generous neighbors. And because of one neighborhood food drive, started by a first grader at Centerville Elementary, they were able to collect 320 food items and $60 in cash for Water Street Mission in Lancaster City. This is the thing we made! Yes, that's it, dude! And for Hemfield Happenings, I'm Autumn Rhodes. Staying at home can be boring sometimes. Grace Monez saw what fun and interesting things people are doing to stay busy. During this quarantine period, people have found themselves with a lot of extra time. Some people have taken advantage of this by doing fun and interesting things. Paige Dickinson has enjoyed makeup for many years. She is now using this time to develop her skills. I originally started doing makeup in seventh grade. I've been doing it for a while. I'm a really creative person, so it's like another outlet to work on stuff. So, yeah. Paige has also tried many new looks. Over this break, some of the looks I've done, I've done a galaxy look where I got make like face paint and I would just paint on the galaxy. So that's one of them. Another one, I did a James Charles inspired look where I did the, this cut creep glam type of look and then I get white face paint, put like my mouth down to my like collarbone area and then get foundation and drip it. So it's more like some abstract looks, but yeah, those are some of my looks I've done. Madison Boring has been spending her time writing the novel she has been aspiring to write for a long time. Um, I've been wanting to write this specific novel since ninth grade, and I have not found the time or the drive like or the energy to like actually put forth some work. And I figured over quarantine, like we have so much more time to do, do stuff that like it would be silly to let all that time go to waste. And so like I actually have time to sit down and like work on what I want to. Madison has a few ways of going about organizing her writing. Um, I have two different documents set up to help me organize. So whenever I have bursts of inspiration that like I know I'll forget if I don't write them down, I write them in my notes document, which literally looks like I'm schizophrenic because it's a bunch of phrases and stuff like that that remind me when I actually have time to sit down and write about them. And then I have my draft document where I write scenes out separately, where I can go in chronological order or skip around a little bit, and I can write down how dialogue should happen, what kind of settings, and things like that. Gianna Hoover has been expanding her photography portfolio over this time at home. 
So Grant, my brother, he's really into fashion. Um, so, and I love photography, obviously. So we kind of took our hobbies and put them together. Um, so it's pretty mutual. We are really good friends. Like we hang out all the time. So it's pretty chill. Even though there are limited places you can go, Gianna makes the most of it. Originally, when this whole thing was not as um, severe as it was, we went to Lancaster City um, and kind of were there, was there for a little bit and left. But now that that's not the case, we just go around my house. There's like woods across the street that we can kind of work with. Whether you want to be a photographer or even a makeup artist, take it from these girls. Now is a great time to get started. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Grace Monis. Recently, because of COVID-19, schools in PA were shut down, which means sports seasons were as well. Girls lacrosse being one of them, Abby Gingrich and Bren Axe are two varsity players that go in depth about how, despite the challenge, the team is able to keep practicing. Our coaches are sending out uh, daily workouts every day of the week to help us stay in shape for next season and to just stay in shape in general. Our coaches are keeping us in shape by sending us different types of workouts and wall ball routines. Um, we receive cardio workouts and agility workouts. A lot of the time it's like cones and uh, side shuffling and back paddling, things like that. But then she also sometimes sends out like different abs and or she'll just be like, go on a run and then do this ab set. They're sending us the workouts over Gmail or Team Snap, which is an app where we are all on it in a little group. They don't really know if we're doing them or not. They're just trusting that we are and trusting that we're doing it to get better and that we're keeping up to date with the workouts, but there's no way for her to actually know if we're doing them or not. I feel pretty upset about the season being canceled since we could have been good this year, but we're optimistic about next year. As you can see, the team has figured out a way to stay in shape together and prepare for next season. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Ava Bear. Many schools, like Hempfield, are going online to educate students during quarantine. Transitioning to virtual learning is not always easy for younger students, so parents and guardians are often found taking the role as teachers. Brian Haran went to find out more about this unique change. The world has taken a very unique change these past couple months, and one of which is parents now having to become teachers. I am Brian Haran. I am Melissa Haran's dad. I am a district manager for Turkey Hill Minute Markets. So normally I have a about a roughly about a 10 hour work day. Uh, after, after my work day, it'll consist of coming home and for about two hours, uh, usually it takes about to go through and work through the schoolwork and go through and make sure that Alyssa understands it and gets it and knows what she's doing. So our time management's been a lot different, but it's a lot more structured as well. Uh, we've learned to quickly adapt to the changes, the different way of doing things for right now. So it's been, it's been challenging for both myself as a parent and for my daughter. So it's nice having that constant communication with the teachers. Uh, getting the emails or the Schoology messages are very helpful to let us know where the children are as far as in their classes. I'm Alyssa Haran and I'm in sixth grade. I think it's different that our parents are our teachers because they make sure we're up on time and have all our work done. When my parents get home, they help me as much as I can with whatever I'm stuck on. With what Alyssa would love to say. For me, it's pretty annoying when my parents call me in the morning because all I want to do is sleep in because it never feels like a normal school day. And for Henfield Happenings, I'm Brian Haran. Henfield has many students with unique interests. Ava Campbell spoke to Riley Labo about her Little Miss agricultural title. It's really hard to put in um, people's hair. Some students play sports, some students are into art, but Riley Labo has a different passion. Riley LeBeau is a second grader at Landisville Primary Center, and recently she was given the title 2020 Lancaster County Little Miss Agriculture. Me and my parents love farming and gardening, and I love helping them, so my mom said if I wanted to do it, and I said, yeah. So what they do is they have a pageant, that was what she was able to attend 
for all of the Pennsylvania Queens. And then if they get first place, then they would go on to um, the next competition in Ohio. Riley placed really good. Um, she got some second and third places, but she did not win the, you know, Miss Pennsylvania title. Being in this program comes along with many great opportunities. It's been great because she's learned a lot about farming. Like we were able to tour Kreider Farms probably four weeks ago. That was wonderful. We got to tour their dairy farm and she learned a lot. Although the agriculture is important, it means much more to Riley. To me, it's about seeing new friends. I just love to see um, friends that I'm going to be participating with from my pageant. Yeah, she's learned so much, and um, it's just been a great experience, very great people, you know, meeting different farmers and just, and advocates too. Not everybody has to live on a farm to be an advocate. Riley and her family will continue to be advocates even after this year's over. Her passion has allowed her to have many unique experiences and make new friends along the way. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Ava Campbell. Students that are in our Hemfield's Communication Technology class had the chance to travel to Washington, D.C. for the Student Television Network Convention in March. STN is where students shoot and edit films to compete with other schools. The convention was canceled due to COVID-19 and our students arrived back home safely. Before we went home, we got a chance to film and edit in Washington. Eleanor Daig met with business owners in the city to discuss how the disease was affecting them. The coronavirus has affected many people around the world, including the people right here in D.C., causing the closings and cancellations of conventions, stores, and restaurants. However, amidst the chaos, ordinary life can still be seen through small businesses who continue to thrive. An owner of one such business shared her struggles throughout the virus. We coming here, just the opening, doing our part, but unfortunately, we are a customer. With no clear solution, she does her best to take the necessary precautions. I wash my hands frequently, but the, it doesn't freak me out. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Just down the street, the regional manager of a gym is also responding to the coronavirus. You know, um, we, we can only be open and keep doing what we're doing. We really don't have a way to modify anything of what our business practice is because you have to come in here and you have to be able to touch things and, um, and, and, and use our equipment. With no end in sight, business owners are preparing to face losses. I think the following two months, the business, business is going to be down. While the dangers of the coronavirus are clear, these businesses must continue with their ordinary everyday lives. From our nation's capital city, I'm Eleanor Dagg. On HSD TV7, a student-run YouTube channel, Sarah Vanderlaan and Ariana De Jesus put together a short video sharing tips on how to stay busy during quarantine. Hey guys, it's Sarah. And Ariana. Welcome back to another episode of the Imaginations of Sarah and Ariana. Now, we both know how boring it can get while being stuck in the house, but... Practicing social distancing is so important because not only does it keep you safe, it keeps everyone else around you safe. And what better way to practice social distancing is by doing activities you thought you'd never do before. So without further ado, here are some things you can do in quarantine with us. Twelve seconds later. It's been an hour of me sitting in the closet. I don't think she's gonna find me, but I'm gonna open the door. Another thing you can do while in quarantine is finally watch those movies or TV shows that's been on your list for months. I am definitely someone that has a long list of movies I've been dying to see, but has never had the time to sit down and watch the whole thing through in one sitting. So now is the perfect time. Oh, come on. You know you've always wanted to try changing up your hair or something. So I'm just going to go right in. Just kidding. I'm not a Ryan. Instead, I'm going to do this.
Next thing you can do while in quarantine is teach your pet a new trick. Now, I don't have any pets, but if I did, I sure would be teaching the old yeller how to run. A lot of stores are having huge sales right now, so go ahead, treat yourself. Another thing you can do is sleep. Imagine the amount of hours you lost during the school year by staying up till 4 a.m. on your phone watching TikToks. Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. You have all the time in the world now to get a good night's beauty rest. Just don't sleep in till like 5 p.m. though. You know, try to get up at least by like 4.30. You know, don't ask me how I found this, but this one's just self-explanatory. Another thing you can do is practice your speech for when you win your first Oscar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's many people I like to thank, but um, I want to start with the people I respect. Uh, heroes of mine, um, it would be Michael Scott, uh, Matthew Binder, definitely, uh, Obama, and probably my parents would be the fourth one. Um, I think all those people really helped the world in so many ways. Um, it's really beyond words. The next thing you could do is go for a walk. And lastly, you can Call your friends and family who unfortunately cannot be in quarantine with you. We're all going through this tough time together, so it's very important to check up on them and ask how they've been holding up. Well, hopefully you guys found at least one thing you can do while in quarantine. So please remember to practice social distancing because it is so important and just take precautions every day. Make sure to subscribe to HSD TV7 to see more videos like this. Also, be sure to check out our news program on YouTube at WHHS News to watch our at home school announcements. Thanks for watching this month's episode of Hemfield Happenings. And don't forget to stay tuned to next month's virtual episode of Hemfield Happenings.